welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and we are a minimalist family who is living big with a less. And today I am going to show you my hot mess of a pantry. So guys, in these areas where our all of our family are accessing all of the time. I call them high functioning areas where they're high traffic, lots of use, lots of things coming in and out all of the time. It's inevitable that these spots will at times get disorganized, but don't get disheartened. I'm gonna show you how you can reset your pantry so it is functional and decluttered, ready for your family to find the food they need. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm embarrassed to show you just how bad our pantry had gotten. It was a crazy town. I'm gonna show you some photos now. I decided because of how our pantry is, it's really long and thin, which makes it a little difficult to organize, but I have some great tips for you. And so I'm gonna show you just how bad it was so we can get the State of the Union out of the way. There was lots of things here that either didn't belong or were in really badly shaped containers. So I'm talking about round containers that were hard for kids to use. And for me and my pantry, the most important things are that my kids can get in and out of that pantry without having to rip the whole thing apart and that it's really easy for them to find what they need and get in and out really quick. So I'm all about independence for kids and so them being able to get their own snacks is a great help to me and so me setting it out in a way that they can find things really easily is what's going to make a pantry work for our family. Now obviously this video is not about food choices so this video is just showing you how you can organize and whatever things in your pantry, just swap them out for mine and you'll be able to use these skills and these tactics to organize your pantry no matter what shape it is. guys decide to do any sort of organizing job where you're pulling absolutely everything out and sorting it I highly recommend that as you're pulling it out that you're putting it in two categories so you're sorting it as you're pulling it out this means that you have to touch the items less amounts of time you're getting them out already so it's a quick and easy way of sorting them into different categories doesn't matter how many piles you have I have piles here of stuff that's not going to live here anymore snacks and condiments baking goods and smoothie goods and just whatever you need to do to organize it in your brain so that once you start to to organize it back into the space it's so much easier something is behind the clouds we just have to believe it that we can make the sun come out okay guys this is truth moment i just found the most disgusting moldy sweet potato in my cupboard which is exactly why i'm doing this and i hate food waste i hate it but i also get that you know things get lost and there is no need to, you know, me getting upset about it is not going to change anything. It's not going to give me the money back. It's not going to save this sweet potato. So I just, I'm just acknowledging it. Whoops, I made a mistake. I'm going to get rid of this. And it's a great example of why doing something like pulling everything out of your pantry, reassessing your needs is so important because it lets you catch these things and it might stop you from having the same problem next time.
even talk about how short I am, but whenever I am doing an organizing job, if I'm making over a space, I make sure that I give everything a really good clean top to bottom. It's not that often that we have everything out of a cupboard, so it's a great opportunity to give it a good wipe out and make sure that you're starting your organizing with a fresh clean space. taking everything out of the pantry and obviously putting it behind me and I've cleaned the pantry and I have a really good idea now of what storage containers I want to keep and keep using in my pantry and what sort of things I need to purchase. So I think it is really important to go through this process first whether even if you want to go a little bit further and start putting things back in your pantry or closet or wherever you're making over and then seeing what you need container organized solution wise after that so i have had some ideas for a while so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to leave all of this here and i'm just going to go i've made a list and i have checked the dimensions of all of my shelves and i know the sizes of things that i need to get and that is really important so i'm going to take this tape measure with me so when i'm looking at containers i know exactly what size i need and i can measure them in the store to make sure that they're going to fit and be the right thing for when I get home. So all of this is sorted into different categories, which is going to help me when I do start organizing it back into my pantry. And it also helps to identify those things that aren't going to live in the space anymore. So I have an overflow pantry in my linen closet, which is where I keep things that are sort of long-term food storage. And I only keep because of the tight space and how many people live here i only keep the things that i'm using on the day today and then i just refill it from my food storage so for me that is how i have sort of adapted that small skinny pantry i use it as my high functioning you have to be really important, really useful in order to live in my pantry out here. And so if something is a food that we're using all the time, or I know that I need my kids to be able to access it, I'm gonna make sure it's got a great spot in the pantry here. And if it's stuff that I'm not using on the day-to-day, -day, I don't need, you know, 15 bottles of pasta sauce in my teeny tiny pantry out here. The other, you know, 13 bottles can live in my food storage and I can have two here for when I'm cooking dinner and then I can just replenish from my food storage. So I'm going to go shopping and just get a few items that I am missing or that I need to swap out so that they will be better space wise. And then when I get back, I'll show you exactly what I bought, how much it costs and how I'm going to put everything back in that pantry. Okay guys, I am back. It's actually the next day, hence the change of clothes. But like I always say, I always leave my projects in a way that if I need to stop, it's okay. So yes, my family has been living out of a pantry that looks like it's beat on my floor, but that is completely fine. It was only for a short period of time so that I could finish the job properly. But I thought I would quickly show you what I got to do this project. Now, you can absolutely just use the things that you have. And I probably could have done that this time, but it has been a long time since I bought anything for my pantry. And because this pantry is quite different to my last ones, I wanted to buy a couple of things that were specific for the size pantry that I have. And realistically, I think I spent almost $30 exactly, and I'll be able to do this whole project for 30 bucks. 
So one of the things I got was this thin container. So I will be able to use this for like open snacks and I'll show you that in a minute. But the reason I really like this is because it's fairly tall that it's going to keep things nice and organized, but it's also thin because obviously I've got a tall, thin pantry. The next thing I got is this tiered, what do they call it? Three tier shelf. So basically what I'm going to use this for is all of those little condimenty, saucy, spicy things that have been lurking in my cupboards. I find that if I'm able to see them all, they're quick and easy to grab. This was like five bucks. And if you have trouble like needing to stack items, I think something like this is amazing. For all of my American viewers, we have no Dollar Tree here in Australia. So I'm sure that between Walmart and Dollar Tree, you could probably get this even cheaper than what I did. Another thing I got was these salt and pepper shakers. I use a pepper grinder, but I have had no salt shaker. So I've been doing it like my Italian nonna and just like sprinkling it like a crazy woman. But these I were like two bucks and I'm just going to use them for salt because I use a pepper grinder. But that was just something. And then I can move my big bag of salt into the storage cupboard. Now, this one, I but it just comes with lids. I don't use the lids. But this is what I'm intending on using to corral all of our smoothie supplies so that when either me or my husband are making smoothies, we can just grab this, pull it out, and they'll have all the things we need. The last thing I got were some containers. Now, I am not great at converting things from packets to containers. So I have limited the amount of things to things I knew I would do it for. So that's things like icing sugar, white sugar, rice, bicarb soda, those things that I know I'm going to have in my cupboard all the time and that I will, that sort of are there for a longer period of time. Because there is just no point in me moving crackers to a container because my kids We'll probably finish that packet of crackers in the next couple of days. And then I just end up with a whole heap of containers that are going unused. So this pack happened to have the exact containers I needed because I originally got them all singularly. Um, and I normally wouldn't buy a big thing of containers because I don't like having ones around that I'm not using. But I did do my maths and this is exactly what I need. So I can't wait to fill these up. These are, I'll see if I can open it, hang on. So because these containers are tall and thin, they are exactly what I need and they stack on top of each other. They're clear so I can see how much is inside them. These, the all of them were $12 and they're gray. Guys, my minimalist heart beats for white and gray. So these are just the perfect containers for what I'm going to need to stack them into the pantry. So now we have all of these categorized. We have all the containers we need. It's time to get organizing back into that cupboard. We've made sure we've decluttered now. We've moved out stuff that doesn't belong there. So now it's time to put just the things we want back in. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high 
even if the sky is falling down. As you guys can see, I have some very sweet little helpers today, and we are just getting some of these things from out of their packages into their new containers. And just a little tip, guys, if you ever don't have a funnel, you can always use the top of a plastic bottle and it works just the same. Wings to fly. Sometimes we're crashing down, but we get up and start from the ground. And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know if I let figure out where the road goes. I'm just moving some of our opened snacks into smaller snaplock bags. Now, I know that snaplock bags aren't everyone's favorite storage tool, but for me, I'm able to reuse them over and over again, and they're a quick and easy way for my kids to put snacks away and for me to grab those snacks when we're on the run. Whenever you are organizing a space, don't be afraid to try it a couple of different ways. If the first way doesn't feel right, it's completely normal to be able to change it up, see which things fit where best, and you won't know unless you try. actually ordered some labels for these containers but they hadn't arrived when I finished this project but is there anything worse than thinking you're getting icing sugar and getting baking soda instead so I have organized some little labels so we'll be able to see exactly what's in every container I am ridiculously happy with how everything turned out in our pantry. It is so much more functional now. It is so easy for my kids to be able to access what they need, as well as for me to be able to see what needs to be topped up and exactly what we have at any given time. So I was really surprised. There is actually very little that I've taken out of this pantry, yet there is so much more space. So I'm gonna put up a picture now to show you exactly what I took out. So basically it was just some storage baskets that we're no longer using and some really badly shaped food containers, food storage containers that I've replaced with ones that are much more streamlined. 
and also all of our like reusable bags were taking up valuable real estate in the bottom of my pantry and I've moved them into our garage so I can quickly grab them when I'm going in the car and this is something I find time and time again when I'm organizing a space is that making sure that in these prime real estate areas like your pantry that your Things that don't need to live there shouldn't be there and move them to wherever they're going to serve you best. So I thought I would take you with before and after shots straight from the top down so you can see what it was like and what I've changed it to. But the very top level is really clear right now, which is great because as I shop and we get new things and there's all those seasonal ingredients, I love to have some extra space there. So that is perfect. And then underneath that, I have mainly things around like meal making things. So baking items, things I use for making snacks for the kids, as well as like TVPs, flowers, sugars, everything like that is gonna live up there. The reason for that is, is that I'm really the only one that accesses that. And so the kids don't need access to it, but I can see exactly what we have. I can top it up if needed. I did do this project where my pantry was fairly eaten down, but still had a lot of the ingredients that I have most of the time. So I'm able to just replenish those things and that there is still space for me to add things like pasta sauce, which I've actually run out of, and there's plenty of space for that to live in there. The next shelf down is where we're starting to get where my kids can reach and it's also what's at eye level. And so just like at the supermarket, I want my pantry's eye level and lower to be that space where all of my favorite things live. So this is our condiments and our spray oil, salt, pepper, all of those things that I'm using all the time are really quick and easy to grab, as well as things for my kids to make sandwiches like peanut butter and honey and those things that they're adding all the time. I'm a huge fan of these tiered shelves because it's given me so much better use of the space and I can see what's in there. I've got space to add some more things like tins from my food storage into my pantry. Underneath that is again, prime real estate for my little kids. This will be their eye level. So this is where I have put their cereal and their snacks so that it's quick and easy for them to grab. Another thing I did, and I cannot believe I haven't thought of this before, was I moved our pretzels from that giant round tub, which is not space efficient, into a container where the kids can come and just quickly lift the lid, grab some pretzels in a bowl, and then shut the lid really easily, as opposed to that twist off lid. So if you have little ones in your home, switching their snacks to a place where they can easily reach it, and so that it's quick and easy for them to grab is a lifesaver. Underneath this shelf, I have a few more breakfast items. My kids like to make oatmeal or we call it porridge here in Australia. So that's all down low for them to be able to reach. And it's also where I'm storing our potatoes. Normally I would have some sweet potatoes and some onions in there, but I have an overload of potatoes right now, but there will be space in this basket for me to keep those items. Because it's down low in my pantry, this is going to be a dark, cool place for them to live. At the very bottom, I have put all of our smoothie supplies. We live in the tropics, we live here in Australia, and so even in our winter, we still have a lot of smoothies. And so I've put all of our smoothie supplies in one basket, which makes it really quick and easy for either myself or my husband to grab out and then add all of the things we like. So we like flax seeds, chia seeds, plant protein powders, apple cider vinegar, and all of those things are gonna be quick and easy for us to grab when we're making a smoothie. It also means that I can check these things really quickly. So when I'm going to Costco, which is where I get most of our supplies from, like hemp seeds and chia seeds, that I can quickly see how much is there and what I need to replenish. And I can always keep extras in my food storage. So I took a quick photo to just show you what my food storage looks like. So if you are like me and have a small pantry or no pantry at all in your kitchen, that this is a great way of 
you know, I guess having a stockpile of food and then just moving those things out that you are using on the daily. And that way my pantry is going to function really well and I'm not trying to store my huge amounts of food, but I do still have them on hand if I need them. So guys, I hope that this has inspired you to maybe tackle your pantry. If you are not joining us on our Facebook group, we would love to have you there. This is a great place to post photos of if you make over your pantry or if you would like some ideas. We have a whole community of people there who are, cannot wait to start cheering you on. Or if you are needing some more personalized help, I'll leave the link down below for my services so you can get help from one declutterer that is me to another that is you. Have a great week guys, I'll catch you in the next one.